The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Okay, so, so let me first summarize what we did at the end of last lecture. Um, so we can see that the Rindler the Rindler space can be separated from the light cone into two pa uh, into four different patches. In particular, this left patch and the right patch. And this is a constant, constant uh, 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 radius, constant row, so constant row slice, say in the in the in the renderer. So what we showed is that the Minkowski vacuum, the standard, the vacuum we define in the Minkowski uh, uh, quantum field theory, can be written as an entangled state. Let me express it in terms of the Hilbert space of the left and the right patch. So, so this n sum over all possible energy eigenstates so this en and n are eigenvectors eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the Rindler Hamiltonian, which we call the HR. Okay. And uh, so, so this uh, similarly, this NL. So NR means the vac uh, eigenvector in the right patch, and NL is the eigenvector for the left patch. Okay. And now, when you trace out, so for example, the left patch, suppose you're only interested in the physics in the right patch, when you trace out the left patch, then you find the then you find the uh, 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 thermal density matrix for the right part, okay? And the thermal density matrix is the partition function for the full Rindler minus two pi h, okay? And uh, so, so you conclude that the temperature is one over two pi. Okay, so that's what we did at the last, at the uh, at the end of last lecture. So there are several key elements here. So there are several key elements here. So the first key element is that the Minkowski ground state turned out to be a particular kind of entangled state between the left and the right patch, and then you get the thermal density matrix when you have a ignorance about the left patch. Okay, so these are the two, two of the basic elements. So any questions on this? Yes? Physical meaning to the left patch? Hmm? Is there any physical meaning to the left patch? Uh, it's, the same, uh, it's the same physical meaning to the right patch. It's just, uh, um, uh, um, yeah, uh, 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 for, the, uh, for the observer, in the right patch, of course, you don't see the left patch. And uh, uh, so that's why you get the thermal density. Yeah, that's why you have to integrate them out. So that's the, yeah, they, they play a very important physical role. No, 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 this is just pure Minkowski space. Yeah, this is just pure Minkowski space. Uh, 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 this is just Minkowski space. Uh, 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 
so this kind of observer can only observe the right patch. So to, to this kind of observer, then, then you must integrate out all the physics in the left patch. And so, they, so that's why they see a thermal physics. So that, yeah, so this is just a physical explanation why they see a thermal physics. Why yes. we need to introduce uh, harmonic oscillator during all this? It seems uh, it's HR can be anything. Yeah. It's yeah. Yes. So why, uh, I forgot the reason why we introduce harmonic oscillator. Oh, I just gave you a simple example to explain this kind of physics using a simple example. Okay. Uh, uh, just in case you're not familiar with this kind of physics, I, uh, I gave you a simple example to build up your intuition. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, um, Yeah, uh, the reason we consider the harmonic oscillator, there's a lot of important reason, is that if you compute, uh, uh, say if you quantize the scalar field theory, or so any theory on this space, say if you quantize a free quantum field theory, uh, uh, that just reduces the harmonic oscillator. So the harmonic oscillator, in fact, have the exact same physics as general quantum field theory you consider. Any other questions? Yeah. So that the right patch, the rinder patch, corresponds to the exterior of black hole, right? Um, the, 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 in the black hole problem, the counterpart of the right patch is the exterior of the black hole. That's right. So the, the upper patch is the interior. Yeah, that's right. So what are the, the kind of this kind Yeah, the left patch is another asymptotic region of the black hole, which is also outside the horizon. So the full extended black hole have two asymptotic regions. Yeah. So what, is there any kind of intuitive way? What's left patch? What does it correspond? Uh, yeah, as I said, uh, 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 yeah, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about black hole in a little bit. Any other questions? Good. So. Um, So let me make some further remarks. The first is that this Minkowski vacuum, this entangled state between the left and the right, is invariant. under the action or maybe I should say it just is a uh, yeah uh, 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 it, uh, let me just say it is in worrying under hr r minus hr left okay so um by invariant under this, I mean, so this state is annihilated by this, and this invariant under any translation generated by this combination. Okay, uh, 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 um, yeah, I'm not using a very precise English, but I think you understand what I mean. Anyway, so so this you can see it immediately from there. Uh, 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 just uh, uh, just exactly as our uh, harmonic oscillator example, and if you act this on that. So this R means Rindler, and this R means the right patch and left patch, okay? So if you act this on that state, then, then you just get an E, and because of the minus sign, they just canceled, okay? And uh, so this minus sign is related to what I said last time, is that you can think of the left patch as the time running in the opposite direction, okay? By time, I mean this eta, OK? OK? So what this operator gener does is to generate a flow, just to generate flow. In eta, so the eta corresponding to 
so this corresponding to constant row surface, okay? And the flow in the right quadrant is going up, but in the left quadrant it should go down. So the time should move in the opposite direction. And that's what this minus sign means. Okay? And this transformation will leave this state invariant. And you get the same thing as we did before for the harmonic oscillator. Any questions on this? So you can immediately see from that, uh, from that equation, uh, uh, this operator violate that state. OK? So this can also be So do you have any problem saying that the HR generates translation along this? Say, is this clear to you? The left, the, the left of R, so the time direction is the opposite. Does it mean that uh, any other physical law is the uh, opposite time translation way? Yeah, it doesn't matter what you mean. It doesn't matter how you interpret physically. Right now, I'm talking about the mathematical statement. I want to first understand the mathematical statement. So this mathematical statement have two layer. Yeah, let me write explicitly. This means I H R R minus H L H R left acting on zero m with any With any eta, this is invariant, OK? This is invariant, OK? And uh, yeah, this you can just see directly from that, the fact this operator violates that state, OK? And then that means that this thing uh, uh, leave this thing invariant. And the action of this guy, the action, this operator from the point of view of the right patch, corresponding you generate translation in the eta, because uh, 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 HR is the Hamiltonian for the eta. So this just generates the, uh, the translation in eta, uh, which leave a row invariant. And this slice I'm drawing here is the constant row slice. So that means this generates a translation along that arrow direction, move in the, posit move in the positive time, OK? And but this minus sign means that in the left patch, the corresponding transformation will move in the opposite direction. Okay? And that operation will leave this state invariant. Okay? Yes? So one question. So sometimes people have this interpretation, I'm not sure if this picture is correct, but in the black hole picture we interpret the bottom thing as being some sort of white hole which sort of spews out things. Mm -hmm. So if we reverse time, then does it sort of become a black hole again? No, 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 no. We are talking about completely different things. Here, I'm just talking about in the left and in the right, you can choose whatever time direction you want. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm just making a statement. He said, if I make this kind of operation, which I do, tra do time translation in the positive di uh, time direction, but in the opposite time direction in the left, yeah, okay. that particular operation leaves the leaves this uh, state invariant. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can, for physical applications, you can choose whatever time direction you want. Uh, uh, you can choose whatever time direction you want. Uh, and this is a mathematical statement saying this particular operator will uh, uh, leave this state invariant, and this particular operator have the interpretation of generate opposite time translation in the left and the right patch. OK? So this is algebraic statement, but this can also be seen geometrically. This can also be seen geometrically. So if you work out the relation between the Minkowski's coordinates and the Rindela coordinates, then you can see, then you can see immediately yourself you can actually immediately just see is that geometrically eta translation 
is a boost. Okay. Next t. Okay, it's a so what that does is just generate a boost. So, so if this is not immediately clear to you, just uh, uh, go back, uh, try to look at the translation between them, uh, uh, a translation between the two coordinates, then you will see it immediately, okay? So in other words, the, this HR actually generates a boost, okay? This Hamiltonian essentially uh, generates a boost. This Rindler Hamiltonian generates a boost. So, yeah, one second, let me finish. So, clearly, by definition, the Minkowski vacuum is invariant on the boost. Okay? So this statement is essentially the statement that the, uh, 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 this thing is invariant on the boost. And then you can see this negative sign. Then you can see the negative sign from the fact that if you make a Lorentz boost, and this is the trajectory of the Lorentz boost, and they act opposite direction in the left and in the right. Okay, so that's why there's a negative sign here. Okay? And so this negative sign corresponds to the geometric statement that when you make a Lorentz boost in the Minkowski plane, and the action on the left and on the right is in the opposite direction. So the same boost will take a point here to there, but will take a point here to here, OK? And you can check yourself. And this translates into algebraic statement just become this statement. And this statement is, is uh, the same that this is invariant on the boost, OK? So this is the first um, remark. And the second remark is that if we expand say the field phi r in the right patch, OK, phi r in the right patch in terms of a complete set of modes, just as what you normally do when you do canonical condensation. the right patch, say, so this defines a violation and the, uh, 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 so this defines a violation and the creation operators. Uh, 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 for um, for the theory in the right patch, and similarly you can do it in the left patch, <laughs> and then you can show just based on that, just based on that relation, okay, just based on that relation you can show. So let's consider the free scalar field theory. So you can show that this um, just as the uh, harmonic the harmonic oscillator example we discussed before, and uh, this. A Minkowski state can be written as a um, squeezed state in terms of this, uh, uh, in terms of their vacuum. But now you have to take the product of all possible modes, and omega j is the frequency for each mode. So this is a precise analog of the harmonic oscillator example, just because each, each set of modes just give you, a thing, uh, give you a harmonic oscillator. So you just take the tensor product of all these harmonic oscillators, and then you have this relation. And just uh, also very similarly, the usual Minkowski Creation and the relation operators are 
are related. So this AJ are AJL by Bogle Boff transformations. says the um, harmonic oscillator example, OK? So I will not write uh, 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 the, this transformation explicitly. Um, but essentially, just direct generalize uh, of the harmonic oscillator example, because, this, because the field theory is just a bunch of harmonic oscillators. Uh, a few series, just a bunch of harmonic oscillators. Any questions regarding this point? Yes? Can I ask about the, yeah. uh, so, just to check, so the Hamiltonian, like right and left, only affect, uh, so like the right only affects the right batch and is identity everywhere else. Sure. Yeah. So that the combination uh, leaves the bottom and the top portion just fixed. Mm -hmm. So the combination leaves the bottom and the top order fixed? Well, you, you, um, you don't directly, <clears throat> yeah, when we, um, yeah, so this is, uh, um, so, so this operation itself does not directly, uh, 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 so this operation itself does not directly access the top and the bottom version. Uh, and, uh, and this is a trajectory of them. So if you have a point there, just take it into the hyperbolic trajectory. So we're not taking to there. Right. And yeah. the top and the bottom are just like the it's identity on, on those portions. So so it keeps them fixed. No. <laughs> when you define the Hilbert space, you only define for the left and the right because they don't define Hilbert space. Mm -hmm. The field, uh, the Hilbert space is defined for given slice, uh, given time slice. So that's only include the left and the right. And those paths corresponding to future evolution. And those evolution uh, is not controlled by them, because they only take you uh, 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 along the hyperbolic trajectory. Yeah. Any other questions? Good. So, so the third remark is that all the discussions Generalize in completely parallel to Swashield space time. Okay. In particular, we said before the Swashield flag cam have this uh, following have the following uh, space-time causal structure. You have a so this is your original region outside the horizon, but then you can extend this region to. Then you, can re then you can extend this part of the space-time into four regions. In particular, you have two, again, you have R and L, two asymptotic regions. So, so this way is go to R in go to infinity. And similarly, this way also R goes to infinity. OK? So again, then this hard Hawking vacuum state, which it will be defined from going to an, going to Euclidean signature and uh, and uh, compactify this tau, then again corresponding to an entangled state between the left and the right. And if you ignore the left, then again you get a thermal state from the right. Okay, so the story is completely in parallel uh, 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 with what we discussed before. 
the only thing, the only different thing is a little bit technic technicality is that, of course, the specific metric are different. Uh, specific metric are different. Okay? And in particular, this Hazard Hawking vacuum can be obtained by doing Euclidean path integral. Again, will be the half space. So this is the tau direction. Uh, again, you do the half space and, uh, and the times S2. OK, it's the same thing, uh, 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 exactly as we did for the, for the, for the Rindler. Uh, uh, um, you, uh, you do the half space. And, uh, 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 and then when you, uh, when you interpret in terms of this tau foliation, which is angle, then you get this entangled state, OK? Then this entangled state. So any questions on this? Yes? So just to clarify, so this, uh, this entangled state is really nothing more than a mathematical trick to, to help us, or, or should I think about it physically? No, this is a fact. This is not a mathematical trick. Uh, it, it, it just, uh, uh, for example, in that case, the, the Minkowski vacuum is entangled state if you write it in terms of the Hilbert space of the left and the right patch. This is a mathematical fact. This is not a mathematical trick. Well, I mean, in the sense that I'm perfectly also allowed, I can create an equivalent description, something which, in my patch, gives me the same description if I just think of a perfectly thermal state. And I don't even have to think about it being entangled with anything. Like, is that also OK? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, but I'm just telling you, um, uh, if you are observer in the right patch, of course, you will never see anything on the left patch. Right. Uh, 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 I'm just giving you a physical explanation. Where does that physical, uh, where does that thermal nature come from? Sure, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is this Minkowski vacuum defined in the upper patch? Sorry? Yeah. So, you're talking about this upper patch? So the story is that following, in the standard QFT in the Minkowski space-time, you define whatever your state at t equal to 0, then you involve this time. Then, of course, that will, involve, uh, uh, that will include this part. And the standard Minkowski time evolution, in terms of capital T, will, in, will include this part. But if you do the Rindler time evolution, then, we are not, uh, then you will not involve that part. Yeah, is that what you're asking? So it's not defined in the upper patch? Hmm? It's not defined in the upper patch? No, it's not. It, it, it just does not access those information because, those, uh, 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 because the, uh, 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 the time translation is always like this. The time translation will, always, uh, will, will never take you there. Uh, uh, you have to ask, what is your time translation? So, so in quantum mechanics, you define an initial state. And then, then your Hamiltonian take you evolve into future time. And in, in, then depend on which time you use, then cover different regions uh, of the Minkowski space time. If you use the standard Minkowski time, capital T, then that will cover everything. If you only use the renderless uh, time, then that only covers this region or this region. Any other questions? Good. The fourth remark. So now let me call this. So this is R and L and this F. OK? So let me call this region F. So, so this story explains perfectly in the Swashio space time, why uh, observer at infinity will see, say, uh, um, thermal radiation. But actually, this does not apply to the real life black holes. Because the black hole formed by gravitational collapse. only have uh, 
the right and the future region. You don't have the left region. You don't have the left region. Okay. So this discussion does not apply. Okay. This discussion does not apply. But this is only one of the ways to derive that the black hole have a finite temperature. In fact, the Hawking's original derivation, just by considering uh, scalar fields, just by uh, uh, considering quantizing scalar field alone in the right patch, and he already did, deduced the the uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the thermal nature. So, so even though this particular discussion does not apply, uh, 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 all our conclusion, all our conclusion does apply. Okay. Our oh, conclusion does apply, including the. Uh, uh, finite temperature, et cetera. Okay. So now to interpret where does this temperature come from, and later we will say actually the black hole not only have a temperature, actually satisfy all the thermodynamics. So in this case, to interpret where this temperature come from is physically more intricate. Okay, so I will not try to do it now. But later, uh, when we talk about the, the duality, and then it will be a better place to go back to this question. And then we can ask the precise difference between these two cases, between the case which you have all patches and the case which you only have two, patch, uh, uh, only have two regions. And they are actually physically fundamentally different. They're physically fundamentally different. But the reason those conclusion applies is because the, uh, the temperature, in fact, is a, is a statement that you can make by the local observer. For local observer, outside the horizon, he's not going to tell the difference between this metric and the exact, and the uh, almost identical metric uh, in the, in the in outside the horizon. Outside the horizon, Schwarzschild metric is a, is a perfect one. And so, uh, so locally, he will not tell any difference. So that's why the local observer should always see the temperature. Uh, if you see it in one case, uh, uh, you will see it in the other case. Okay. But the underlying physics is, uh, uh, will turn out to be very different. Yes. How are we defining temperature here? Um, are we defining it by the energy that we do instead? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we define uh, in terms of the density matrix. Oh, it's defined by that equation. Right. Yeah. So the so the density matrix, say if you have a density matrix like this, with z is trace expansion minus beta h, then you say the temperature is 1 over beta. So that's how we define temperature in quantum statistical physics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this defines a canonical ensemble for you. And, and this beta uh, is the temperature, the amount of temperature. OK, so any questions on this? I, I hope a lot, because I want to discuss this later, not now. <laughs> um, sir, yes? If, if we hold a, a thermometer like this, should, <laughs> should it get some different temperature that if we let it fall? Yeah. In fact, it's accelerated right now. Yeah, yeah. And this has been measured? No. <laughs> because it's too low, the temperature, right. Yeah. Yeah, because our temperature would be much bigger than this temperature you, you are able to. Yeah, just the, the fluctuation of air in this room will create fluctuations in temperature which are much higher than that kind of temperature. In the space, you also have to do very precise measurement. It's, yeah, you have to calculate it. Yeah, each bar is very small. It's <laughs> <laughs> by the mass. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, to like, constructing on that same question. So the same thermometer that is being, being held in position. So if I observe it while sitting down here, so I'm accelerated with it, um, I'm like the render. Uh, observer, yeah. and I would see it at a certain temperature, right? 
um, although it's very small, so we haven't been able to measure everything. But if I am instead free falling while the thermometer is being held in place, would yeah. I then not see? Would I then not measure a temperature? Would I measure temperatures? Yeah, yeah, you won't be able to see a temperature. Yeah, free falling. Uh, uh, Although the won't see. Being held. So the thermometer is accelerating. No, the thermometer is also free falling. If you free, no, if you free fall, the thermometer also free fall. No, no, I mean uh, he holds the thermometer and he is sitting in his chair, but I'm the I'm the one who measured the reading on the thermometer, <laughs> and I'm free falling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an intricate experiment. Uh, 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 then we have to analyze that. So, uh, so. So the photon from his thermometer then will somehow go into your eyes and you will analyze it. Uh, uh, then whatever is the reading on his uh, uh, thermometer, you will see it. Yeah. No, uh, no, you are not doing any measurement. You just see the reading on his thermometer. If his thermometer has a temperature, you will see a temperature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are not doing a measurement yourself. <laughs> so, okay, so now bringing it back to non-gravitational physics, flat yeah. space time, I'm an, an inertial observer, and I see a thermometer accelerating by me. I would therefore see it as reading, you know, reading a certain temperature. Yeah, the, the thermometer itself is a measurement. I mean, you need to have, you need to have something to measure yourself. Yeah, it's right. not that you're feeling. <laughs> Sorry? No, like no, the thermometer, whatever thermometer uh, is doing, what you are doing, you, you just read uh, the thermometer. And uh, uh, it has nothing to do whether the thermometer uh, has a temperature or not. The thermometer maybe have a temperature due to some other reason. What you, have, <laughs> what you could do is just read that thing. Except yeah. Say we, I mean, right. OK, so. Right. <laughs> OK, so, so let me continue. So we talk a okay. So now we find the black hole has a temperature. So then you only need to take a very small leap of phase. Saying if this guy has a temperature then it should satisfy some dynamics, OK? Then, then we say uh, 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 this must obey some dynamics. OK, must obey some dynamic black hole. And then you immediately deduce there should be an uh, entropy. Because now you can just apply the first law. For example, uh, we have the uh, some dynamical relation dSDE should be 1 over t. Okay, Say, uh, uh, if we think of t as a function of e, then by integrating this equation, we should deduce what is the entropy of the black hole. So remember the t of the black hole is 1 over, yeah, remember the t of the black hole, the t of the black hole, yeah, let me do it here, tbh of the black hole is h bar kappa divided by 2 pi, which is the h bar divided by a pi gn times m. So, so this would be just a pi gn times m h bar. Of course, you identify the mass of the black hole with its energy. So you identify them. So now you can just, you can just integrate this. You can just now become a, a, a trivial exercise. Then you find se is equal to 4 pi gn e squared divided by h bar, and the plus integration constant, OK? And the, this integration constant, we can set it to be 0. Because if the black hole have a 0 mass, of course, there's nothing there. And so uh, 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 um, then we just have this formula. 
So this formula can be written a little bit more geometrically. So also remember the black hole. The threshold radius is 2 gn m. OK? So this can be written a little bit in the geometric way. Is that this can be written in terms of as 4 pi r s square divided by 4 h bar g n. OK, now g n goes to the downstairs because the r s contains two powers of g n. So this is given by the horizon area of the black hole divided by 4 h bar g n. OK? So now we conclude. We conclude just a bit. Let's collect these two formulas together. The temperature of the black hole is h bar times the surface gravity divided by 2 pi. And the entropy of a black hole is the area of the black hole, area of the horizon of the black hole divided by 4 h bar gm. So as I said before, for the black hole, there are two very important geometric quantities. One is kappa, surface gravity. The other is the horizon area. And then, then they enter in a very uh, a nice and simple way into the temperature and the horizon uh, and the uh, entropy of a black hole. OK, let me call this equation 1. This is an important equation. So let me just note one thing. The, this temperature is rather funny if you look at that formula. Because the mass is in the downstairs. F say, if you increase the mass, then the temperature actually decreases. This is actually opposite to your uh, uh, everyday experience. Okay? Because when you increase the mass, the black hole temperature decreases. Okay? So, um, so if you calculate the, if you calculate the uh, uh, say, specific heat, The specific heat is smaller than zero. Okay, so we will later see this is actually this is actually an artifact of a black hole in asymptotically flat space time. So here we are considering black holes in asymptotic flat space time. If you think about black holes, say in the space time like anti-Dieter space, and then actually uh, 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 the temperature will go up with the mass, and in the uh, as in the ordinary story. OK, so this is just a side remark. So another side remark is that this equation, th these equations tend out to be universal. So we, are, we derive it to the simplest as wash of black hole. But actually, those relations apply to all black holes have been discovered. I just apply to every black hole. Okay. So, so now let me talk about the, the uh, uh, a general black hole. So we are mostly just making some statements because of the most of the statements I make here they're highly non-trivial, and uh, each statement may take one lecture to prove. Uh, or maybe even more, so I will not really prove them. I just quote them, and uh, and uh, uh, and I can also not prove it on the spot. Uh, um, so so first is something called the low hair theorem. So low hair theorem says that the stationary. Stationary is a key word. And the symptotically flat this is also a key word. Black hole is fully characterized by the first mass, 
second angular momentum third conserved gauge charge okay So the Schwarzschild black hole we talked about corresponding to a special case which angular momentum is zero, and the conserved charge, uh, 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 yeah, conserved charge, for example, the electric charge. For example, electric charge, okay. And that's our, uh, uh, um, yeah, so let me just give some, so typically we denote uh, uh, the mass by M and the angular momentum by J, and the electric charge by Q. So the Schwarzschild black hole corresponding to the J equal to zero and the Q equal to zero. But the more general black holes, you can have the both J and the Q. Um, so for our, um, in, in string theory, there can be many, many different gauge fields. So in string theory, actually, uh, there are many, many different charges. So black holes in string theory can have uh, 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 many, many more charges than, say, just in the standard model. Just in the standard model. Uh, um, yeah, just for all those black holes, uh, 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 this equation one still holds, OK? Yes? So uh, in like proving this theorem, you have to kind of start off with a certain definition of what is a black hole and what isn't a black hole. So like, what is the like key feature that defines it? Because there's lots of metrics, and you know, some of them are characterized by only these three things, and some are not. And like, no, you must have even the horizon. The black hole? Just the presence of some horizon. Yeah, it's a even horizon. Yeah. Um, okay, but like in Rindler we have an event horizon. Hmm? In Rindler we have an event horizon. That's not a black hole metric, right? Um, that's true. Uh, you, uh, you you should have uh, uh, you should at least have an object. You should have some mass. Sure, <laughs> yes. You could, should have some quantum number. I could, uh, you know, be accelerating next to the no, and then I have so, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Rindler is called observer horizon. Okay. It's an observer dependent horizon. And in the black hole, it's not. So you cannot go to any frame where there is no horizon? Uh, hmm? What if you're free falling? No, no, no. Uh, it, 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 yeah, well, I'm just saying that the uh, here, uh, uh, here, the horizon, uh, uh, you can, different observer have a different horizon. So, so you can diffeomorphism the horizon out of the picture. So here, the horizon is arbitrary. It depends on your observer. It, yeah. Even though I draw here, mm -hmm. but, how, uh, uh, but the ob my, uh, this does not have to cross uh, origin. This can be anywhere. Uh, it, anyway, just uh, here, there's no genuine uh, 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 horizon. But if I'm free falling into a black hole, I also don't have a horizon, right? No. I'm That's true. But independent of that, just the space-time structure, there's a horizon there. In the, in the space-time structure of the Minkowski space, there's no horizon. You have, in order to talk about window horizon, you have to talk about specific observer to, to have a specific motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I write down the Schwarzschild black hole. Uh, I write down the Schwarzschild metric. In the diffeomorphism environment, way there is already or even the horizon. How do you write down a metric in the diffeomorphism environment? Right? No, no, I'm just saying the notion of the horizon is diffeomorphism environment. Okay. Yeah. But like, if I'm in a frame that's free falling, then I don't see a horizon, right? Isn't that a diffeomorphism which transforms me to a frame where there is no horizon? Uh, 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 maybe let me say this, uh, uh, if this can make you a little bit happier, is that the, to a symptotic observer, uh, okay. uh, there's a horizon. Sure. Uh, there's a diffeomorphism environment horizon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you don't want to fall into the black hole, for those people, there's a horizon. <laughs> <laughs> and the difference from here, if you fall through the horizon, nothing happens. So this uh, uh, no hair theorem is remarkable because it says if you have a star which collapses to form a black hole, 
in this process, all the features of the star will be lost because the black hole only are characterized by those, uh, uh, by those numbers. Okay, uh, but star you can characterize in many, many other different ways. But the black hole essentially don't have any uh, features. Okay, so this is called no hair theorem. The all features. Yes? And what if one adds something like a dilaton scalar field or other field into the black hole? Does that contain no hair hmm? Yeah, um, Yeah, the story is a little bit uh, more complicated. Let's try to not go into that. Uh, 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 there's something called a secondary hair, etc. Uh, um, yeah, it, it, it can, it can. Um, it can, but this is refers to Einstein. But if you go to the frame of Einstein plus uh, uh, Einstein uh, plus the uh, uh, some matter fields, and then this is a statement is true. Any other questions? Okay. So now, now. So historically, of course, people did not discover the temperature first. So, so historically, people first have the no hair theorem. So it seems like black hole is completely featureless. Okay, it's a very boring object. Uh, they don't have any feature. And then people discover the so-called four laws of black hole mechanics. For general black holes, for general stationary black holes, again. Okay. So the zeroth law, okay, we just quote them. He said surface gravity kappa is constant over the horizon. The first law is that if you change the mass of the black hole a little bit, okay, imagine you put something, throw something to the black hole, you change the mass of the black hole a little bit, then you find such a relation. A is the area of the horizon. So J is the angular momentum, and omega is the angular frequency at the horizon. So if you have angular momentum, the black hole will be rotating. So omega is the angular frequency. And uh, um, phi is the electric potential. So if you have a charge, then the black hole also carries an electric field. So, uh, so this is electric potential at the horizon, OK? And uh, you always, in this old notation, you, you normalize the, uh, the electric potential at infinity to be 0. So this is the first law. You just say when you say if you change mass of a black hole and change some angular momentum and change some charge, then to the first order, they satisfy this relation. OK, they satisfy this relation. So this is just purely mechanics, a, 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 a classical GR. This is pure classical GR, OK? And then there's a second law, which is also classical GR. It's at horizon area never decreases. And the third law the surface gravity, yeah, let me just call it kappa. This kappa surface gravity 
of a black hole cannot be reduced to 0. in a finite number of steps. OK. What do you mean by number of steps? Uh, finite number of procedures. Like? <laughs> <laughs> say, say, if each time you throw a particle to a black hole, sure. this is called a step. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is called a step. Yeah, okay. right. Okay. So all these are classical statements, and uh, so this tells uh, uh, the second law. For example, if you throw something into a black hole, the black hole area will increase. So if you collide the two black holes, and then uh, if you collide two black holes, they will merge into a bigger black hole, and this bigger black hole's area will be larger than the sum of the, uh, uh, the earlier two black holes, OK? Than the area of two black holes. Uh, um, yeah. So of course, this law just in this four, these four laws then be, become immediately just like the four laws of thermodynamics. When you uh, make this identification of one, OK, this is the identification of one. Say this one, this just becomes the four laws of thermodynamics. Yeah, some of dynamics. Okay. Some follows of some dynamics. In particular, the first law. If you substitute the kappa and A by the temperature and the entropy, then this just becomes the standard the first law. Okay. In particular, the first law is just dm, s dt, t ds, plus omega dj, plus phi dq. So this is really the first law of some, uh, thermodynamics. OK? So historically, these four laws of uh, uh, mechanics actually was discovered before Hawking's radiation. So first, first discovered this black hole local theorem, and then they discovered these four laws of black hole uh, mechanics. Then they say, ah, this is really look like thermodynamics. And they even pattern these four laws to precisely like the four laws of thermodynamics. But they could not imagine the black hole was a thermodynamic object. Uh, they could not imagine the black hole was a thermodynamic object. So they were saying, uh, if you look at the old paper, there was a very famous paper by, by, by Bardeen, Carter, and Hawking, which discussed these four laws of uh, uh, black hole mechanics. And they said, these four laws of black hole mechanics should actually transcend the standard uh, thermodynamics. The black hole actually should transcend all this, uh, uh, our tra tra traditional physics. So, um, but, but in 1970, around 1972, a young graduate student uh, called uh, 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 Bakenstein, <coughs> so he was uh, a, gr a graduate student at Princeton, so he was study under uh, 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 a guy called Wheeler, uh, uh, study under Wheeler. And uh, so he was very uncomfortable <laughs> with the fact that if you throw something into a black hole, then that thing is gone. Okay, so he was very uncomfortable with that. Because if you throw something into a black hole, it's gone. 
then he concluded that violates the second law of thermodynamics. Because if you throw something into a black hole, that thing is gone, then the entropy associated with that thing is gone. And the black hole is just black hole, have this no hair theorem. And then, then, then you violate the second law of thermodynamics. People like Wheeler or Hawking, they say, oh, this is great. Black hole transcend the thermodynamics. But Bakkenstein was uncomfortable. He thinks thermodynamics should transcend black hole. <laughs> so, so he, and then based on the second law of the black hole, then he said maybe So maybe, so he wrote actually a series of papers, a few papers, actually I don't remember. He said may, if we think black hole has entropy proportional to the area, then the second law of thermodynamics can be saved. Because this area level decrease, and if you throw something into a black hole, even though that's the entropy associated with that guy is lost, but the area also increased, the area also increased, and then you can save the second law of thermodynamics. Then he actually proposed the generalized second law of thermodynamics. So he proposed a gen generalized second law. He said, he said the total, if you take the total entropy of the system to be that of the black hole and the matter field outside the black hole, then, then this ds total must be uh, a long, long decreasing. Okay. Of course, now, if we accept, if we take this leap of faith to really think black hole as a thermal object, then of course the, uh, this generalized second law has to be true because it's a thermal, uh, thermal object. But but when Bakkenstein proposed it, it was really uh, bizarre. It, it, to say in a nice way, uh, 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 because the uh, it, it just sounded crazy, it, it just outright crazy. Because the how can black hole have entropy? Black hole absorb everything. It, it just how can it have entropy? Uh, and it just completely was disregarded by people, and that was discarded by people. And anyway, uh, 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 but but now that he was right. Then, 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 of course, after Hawking's discovery of the Hawking radiation, then it become very natural for the black hole to have entropy. And in particular, this formula, after you determine that the black hole have this temperature, after you fix this prefactor, then you can also, just from the first law, just from here, just from here, to fix that, uh, uh, fix that prefactor of a black hole. So Pakistan could not decide uh, what's, the proportion, what's the proportional constant. So, but once you get that temperature, then this proportional constant just uniquely fixed for, uh, from this equation. So without using, uh, even using that, just, just using the first law of uh, the mechanics, then you, then you immediately can interpret that as, uh, as entropy. Anyway. Um, It's a postulate. It's a guess. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He just postulates oh, okay. if we I imagine. Hmm? It. No, there's no way to derive it. Uh, he he was just saying, if you imagine black hole has entropy proportional to the area, then the second law of thermodynamics can be saved, okay. and he wants to save the second law of thermodynamics. Yes. So one question. So this makes sense classically. If I have a system of entropy and I throw it into a black hole. I mean, entropy is like ignorance. And if I throw ignorance into the black hole, okay, well, maybe it, it, there's somehow the black hole also becomes more ignorant or something. But what does this mean in terms of quantum mechanics when I have a pure state? Like, I mean, in, for, for quantum statistical mechanics, I mean, in some sense, the entropy is just like, you just don't know something about your state, and yeah. it's your fault. And it's not like the black hole should care if it's your fault or not or something. Yeah. So, so, so why does this make sense quantum mechanically? Or maybe it doesn't. Uh, you mean, why does black hole have entropy? Or uh, make sense quantum mechanically. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing as uh, um, this room has entropy. This room we use uh, a quantum statistical physics. If you believe black hole is an ordinary object, 
So then we use quantum statistical physics because we're ignorant about uh, the, the full state of. It's it's not this. Yeah, uh, for black hole we are also ignorant. Okay. Yeah, uh, 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 this is actually something I'm going to talk about now. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I have something more. To okay. Discovery. So basically, I think he did an ideal experiment. So where he thinks of one photon possess one unit of entropy, and mm -hmm. when it enters black hole, it increased the energy of black hole, which increased the mass of black, black hole, which increased the right. horizon of the black hole. Yeah. So in this way, you can actually derive the uh, semi-qualitatively de derive the proportionality. No, uh, you, you, yeah, it, 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 to derive these precise coefficients, uh, uh, it's, no, no, I don't think he derived the coefficients, but I need to check. Uh, I don't think there's any way to derive the, uh, 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 you can at the most uh, uh, put some, uh, say, put some bound on the coefficient, but you cannot derive the coefficients. I think that argument will not be able to, will not enable you to, uh, to, uh, to derive the coefficients. Anyway, um, um, so let me just mention a few more things about black hole. Just this is pure, um, um, just pure. Um, yeah, actually, I'm running out of time. So, so let me just mention some puzzles or paradoxes for the black hole. So we have shown that the black hole is a thermal object. So just, uh, uh, Jordan just asked, but we know the ordinary thermodynamics has a statistical physics behind it, okay? So the uh, so immediate question is actually does the black hole entropy, for example, have a statistical interpretation? So this is uh, one question. And, the, uh, and another question is that does black hole actually respect uh, uh, quantum mechanics? OK, does black hole respect quantum mechanics? So if black hole and should be have a statistical interpretation, then this gives you a very So if black hole have a statistical interpretation, that means so A, if in affirmative, then implies that each black hole, even though black hole at the microscopic level only characterized by these three things, but at the, but the microscopically, must have internal states or maybe I should call it macro state. of order to the entropy, which is the A of the black hole area by, by 4H bar G, OK? So hidden behind this no hair theorem is actually a huge number of macro states. Yeah, just like the uh, it just like the air in this room. Even though we describe it using temperature, pressure, and the energy, etc., but given that microscopic data, there can be a huge number of microstates, and then the similar thing should happen to the black hole. Okay, 
And in order to see that the black hole does have a black hole entropy does have a, a statistic interpretation, then you have to find so many states for black hole. And in order to say answer uh, the question A. So, so this answer has been answered. So this question has been answered in the affirmative for many different types of black holes, say in string theory and also in anti-decitor space-time, in anti-decitor space-time, uh, uh, using string theory method or using this holographic duality. Uh, we will see, uh, uh, um, yeah, we will see uh, examples later. We will see examples later. So, so, so this really confirms that the black hole is a really uh, like an ordinary quantum statistical system. Okay. So regarding this question B, then there's a non non time paradox. So this A has also been a paradox for many years, and was only resolved was only I say uh, 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 the the calculations explicit calculations were able to do. Only uh, in 1996, uh, 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 when the Strominger Waffa they did some very special uh, uh, supersymmetric black hole, which they counted exactly this number of states. Uh, uh, they counted exactly this number of states, and but only for a very specific type of black hole. So, so B is related to the so-called uh, 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 Hawkins information paradox. Information loss paradox. So I will not have time to go into detail here. Let me just give you a very rough version of it. So, so, so you consider a pure state. Uh, consider a star, a, 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 a big star in the pure state. So we know from GR that a sufficiently massive star will always, eventually always collapse to form a black hole. So if you imagine you have a pure star in the pure state collapse to form a black hole, and if quantum mechanics is preserved throughout the process, then this black hole should also be a pure state. So that means the black hole should be just one of all those large number of possible states. Okay, it should be a pure state, but only one of those all possible states. But then Hawking had the argument that saying this is impossible. Because if black hole is a pure state, then when black hole evaporates, so, so the black hole will evaporate, eventually black hole will be gone. Uh, so, the, so the one funny thing about black hole is that the, the the temperature is inverse proportional to the mass. So when the black hole is big, then the temperature is low, then the radiation is slow. But when you start radiate, then the black hole mass will decrease, and then the temperature will be higher, then we'll radiate more. So, uh, so it will be an acceleration process. And eventually, uh, um, eventually uh, 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 presumably, black hole will be gone. So the Hawking. So this kind of semi-classical argument we are given uh, applies only for the mass of a black hole much greater than the Planck mass, okay? Uh, only for uh, uh, much larger than the Planck mass. So, so below Planck mass, what, what happens, nobody knows. Uh, but at least the, uh, uh, this radiation statement should be robust for the mass much, much larger than the Planck mass. Now Hawking then say there's a paradox because because according to his calculation, the radiation is thermal. And we know that the thermal radiation does not contain any information. It cannot contain information about those pure states, because thermal radiation is just uh, information free. And uh, so, so the thermal radiation which come out, come out until you reach, say, the mass of all the Planck mass. Uh, 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 until we reach the, uh, 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 the mass of a Planck mass. And then, before you reach that mass, because the radiation is thermal, there can be no information can come out. Okay? 
And when you reach that Planck mass, it just becomes impossible for, for such a huge amount of uh, 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 internal state to be encoded in the Planck mass object. Okay? So he concluded that the uh, uh, information must be lost. And the black hole must violate quantum mechanics. So this is a very uh, heuristic argument, but I highly suggest if you are interested to go read his original paper, which is very beautiful, because he was really trying to think of a black hole as an ordinary quantum mechanical object. And the way he was thinking about it is really uh, very, very nice. And uh, actually, it, it's not very, not very different from we are thinking about black hole right now from the holographic duality. Uh, uh, he was really thinking as a quantum mechanic object, but he reached, but then he reached this paradox. Anyway, uh, um, so this paradox has bothered people for more than 30 years. So he proposed, so he discovered Hawking radiation in 1974. I think he proposed this paradox maybe in 1976. So um, yeah, for more than 30 years, people will argue with each other what is going to happen. It's typically divided into two camps. So, so the GR people, all they think black hole is everything. Our quantum mechanics is nothing. Uh, and, uh, and the black hole must be able to uh, violate quantum mechanics and, uh, and will bring us to a new uh, frontier we never see before. And uh, the particle physics people are oh, saying, a black hole, oh, we can even create in the accelerator. Uh, <laughs> must, uh, 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 must uh, uh, um, obey quantum mechanics. So people just argue with each other. And uh, without really settling the question in a very convincing way to either camp. But I think this, uh, but, but this holographic duality, once you phrase the black, in the context of holographic duality, then the black hole in anti space spacetime, then can actually, you can actually uh, uh, rephrase this question about the black hole information loss. And the, uh, the graphic duality strongly suggests, I think it's maybe not really completely proved it, strongly suggests at least that the black hole is just an ordinary quantum mechanical object. Uh, we are not, um, yeah, we are not uh, um, transcend the quantum mechanics. We are not trans uh, uh, transcend the quantum mechanics. Yeah, I'm really out of time. Yes? So you said the star is in pure state. But like, how can that be? Because it has a temperature and it's also a thermal system. So how can you put it in a pure state? No, black hole does not have to be in the thermal state. No, I can certainly imagine a, a star which is in a pure state. Yeah. In real life, maybe it's hard to uh, construct them. But on the paper, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> in principle, so. So uh, uh, how many atoms in the star? I don't know. Maybe 10 to the 100? Let's imagine there's 10 to the 100 atoms. But it's radiating all the time, though. So oh. Doesn't that entangle it with things and make it not pure? Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I can certainly write down a wave function for 10 to the 100 particles, which is in the pure state. Mm -hmm. And this will be a big object. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to the rule of GR, this thing will collapse to form a black hole. What about the light that it's emitting, which it has? No, there's no light. No, 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 we, are, we work with zero temperature, just pure state. There's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. No temperature? Zero temperature? Yeah. In principle, I can do that. Back, back. The case is, in that, in that case, will the black hole have the temperature, talking temperature? Yeah, the black hole will have the talking temperature. Uh, but it is still in a pure state. Like the black hole will have a Hawking temperature, will have a seemingly have entropy, but will be a pure state. So this is the essence of the information paradox. So this is the essence of the information paradox. And we will be able to explain it, why this is so, using the holographic duality. Uh, so as the star collapses, it gains a non-zero temperature. It starts at zero temperature and then collapses and becomes non-zero. Yeah, you can, yeah. It's seemingly have a non-zero temperature. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe let's stop here. <laughs>